Yes, uh, we were talking about uh, the modes of implementations. Uh, the two modes, a purely interpreted implementation and purely compiled implementation. So, just to recall, what are we trying to do? We want to implement the language L. That basically means that we want to implement an abstract machine, ML. And we exclude the direct implementation in hardware and, and, and firmware. Um, so, uh, we the implementation of this language L uh, we want to do it, we implement it on a host machine, M-O-L-O, -O, and this takes place by s using some kind of a translation from our uh, language L to this language L-O. So if we first look at the purely interpreted implementation, uh, this figure shows uh, really the, uh, the 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 face of uh, uh, of this uh, purely interpreted implementation. So, w what do we have here? We have a program in the the source language, the program in L, and we also have an input data. The input data is the the data that this program written in L is is. Uh, uh, takes as input. Now, we then write an interpreter for L in this in this language LO, and we execute this interpreter on this machine MO, on this abstract machine MO. And the result of this interpretation is uh, some output. Uh, so we can say that the, a program is implemented in the language LO, which basically interprets all of L's instructions. And this program uh, is called an interpreter, and we use this notation I for interpreter, L, L, O where L is the language that the interpreter is interpreting, and LO is the implementation language. So ILLO is an interpreter that interprets uh, a program uh, written in language L, and the interpreter's I interpreter is implemented in the language LO. So, more formally, we would say that a, an interpreter for language L, written in language LO, is a program which implements a partial function. Uh, let's uh, uh, talk about what we mean by a partial function in a minute, but let's uh, go through this notation here first. So, an interpreter that interprets a program written in L, uh, and the interpreter is uh, uh, implemented in the language L O, is a function from the tuple proc L cross D. Notice that this is what is called a cross product. And in the, since we have uh, uh, only two operands for the cross product, this means it's a basically a tuple, a two tuple, uh, or a pair. So it's a pair. Well, what 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 are the individual uh, components of the pair? Well, proc L is the set of all possible programs that can be written in this language L, and D is the uh, the uh, denotes the set of input and output data. So the interpreter, what does it think of it? What does it take as an input? It takes a, as input a pair. The first component of the pair is a program written in L, and the second input to the interpreter is the uh, is, is is input data. 
And this uh, corresponds to the picture that we saw earlier, that the interpreter here that we're writing takes as input a program written in this language L and some input data for this program. So it takes a pair. And it maps this pair to the set D again. What again was this set D? The set D denotes the set of input and output data. So it maps this pair into uh, uh, a single element. And again, this corresponds to the picture here. We have the pair coming in as a uh, as input to the interpreter, and what does it return? It returns uh, output. And notice that input and output, uh, the D here denotes a set of input and output data. So the interpreter is a function that maps a pair to a single element here, and such that that when we apply the our interpreter to a program written in this language L and some specific input, we should we get the same result as applying the input uh, applying sorry the program to the input. So we should get the same result of uh, interpreting the program giving the input as uh, applying the program directly to the input. Now applying the program directly to the input is in a way a little bit difficult, we could actually do it by hand and uh, if we if we did that we could basically trace the uh, inner workings of the programs giving the input and we would get some output and that output should be exactly the same as when we run the interpreter uh, given this pair as input, the program itself and uh, the input to the program. So, what are, what are the characteristics of uh, uh, an interpreted implementation? Uh, so, the programs in L are not explicitly translated. There is only a decoding procedure. So. Notice that we are not doing any compilation here. We are not explicitly translating the program. We use an interpreter that interprets each of the ex, uh, each of the instructions, each of the statements in L by the decoding phase that we had already talked about. Each uh, sentences, each statement is. Uh, is analyzed, it's decoded in, in order to find out uh, what is the uh, appropriate instruction in the abstract machine that can be used. It is then executed and we go back up in this fetch execution cycle to get the next instruction and so on. So in order to execute an instruction of this uh, of the language L, the interpreter uses a set of instructions in L's O, which corresponds to an instruction in the language L. So remember the interpreter is implemented in L O, so we're using a set of instructions in L O, which corresponds to an instruction in the language L. And this is not a real translation, because the code corresponding to an instruction of L is, is executed by the interpreter, it is not output. It is not a real translation in the sense that when we compile a program from 
some source language to a target language, we have a real translation. Because in that case, the code is output by the compiler. Here, there's no code that is outputted. Uh, the, the, uh, it is executed. The, the instruction of L is executed directly. So, this was a, 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 what was called a purely interpreted implementation. Now let's look at the purely compiled implementation. Uh, so, what do we have? We still have a program written in this source language L. And now, instead of interpreting this program, we compile it. So we have a compiler here, assume that we have a compiler that compiles uh, a program written in L to LO. And we execute this compiler on an abstract machine, uh, MA. The output of this compilation is a new program, is code which is now written in LO. So in this particular case, we are actually doing a real translation. We are translating a program that is written in L to a program that is written in LO. And once we have that program, we can take the input data, run it through the program written in LO, and assume that we, write, we run this program on a host machine, MO, and the result of that is some output. So, a program written in L in this case is explicitly translated to a program written in L's O. And the translation is performed by a program called a compiler, CLLO, meaning compiler that translates a program written in the language L, in the source language L, to the target language LO. So, here is the formal definition of a compiler. A compiler from L to LO is a program which implements a function. Uh, the function is, is maps a program written in L to a program written in LO, such that given a program, PL, meaning a program that is written in L, if the result of, the, of applying the compiler to this program is a new program written in LO, compiled program written in LO, then for every input in our set of inputs and outputs, if we apply the input to the original program, we should get exactly the same as uh, applying the input to the compiled program. The original program is written in L, but our compiled program is written in LO. So again, applying the input to the original program is kind of difficult if we don't do interpretation or compilation, but we could do it, for, for example, by hand. But that result should be exactly the same as applying the compiled version to the input. Now, I just realized now that I, I forgot to talk about the uh, what a partial function is. It's actually not a, not a uh, uh, very important part here in our discussion. We said that an interpreter was something that uh, uh, implemented a partial function. Uh, well, a partial function in mathematics is a, a partial function from x to y is a function f that maps uh, x prime to y prime, a, an element from x prime to y prime, where x prime is a subset of x. So it basically 
uh, means that uh, it doesn't force f to map every element of x to an element of y. That's why we have x here as a subset. So for some elements in the set x, the result might actually be undefined. That's, that's what a partial function is. If x prime is equal to x, then f is called a total function. Okay, so let's go back to our discussion on on compiled implementation. So what are the characteristics here? Well, uh, L is called the source language, while LO is called the object language or the target language. So we are translating, we're writing a compiler that translates a source language L to an object language or a target language LO. Uh, to execute a program PL, which is then written in L, on input data D, we actually execute uh, the compiler with the original program as input. That's the first step. And this produces a compiled program as its output. And this is corresponds to the figure here. So we have a program written in L and we want to apply that program to, a, to an input data. But first we, we execute the compiler to, get, to obtain the compiled version and the compiled version is then written in, in the language LO and then we apply that compiled program to the input data as opposed to applying the input data directly to the original source program which would be kind of difficult to do anyway. Uh, so once we have uh, the compiled version, we can execute the compiled version on our, on our host machine and supplying it with the input data to obtain the desired result. And notice that the translation phase, which is called compilation, is separate from the execution phase. Once we go back here, there's a separate compilation phase here where we compile the program and once the compilation has been carried out, we do the we execute the program, the uh, the compiled program. So the compilation phase is separate from the um, execution phase. In the case of interpreted implementation, there the there is no translation phase. There is nothing. There is no translation phase that is separate from the execution phase. Here we interpret uh, each sentence of the original program uh, on the fly, as we can say. And it is not a real translation because the code corresponding to an instruction of L is executed on the fly, but not output. It's not written uh, or, or, uh, uh, the code is not generated, as is the case for, for pure compilation. So, if we compare these two modes of implementations, we can say that the interpreted implementation, uh, the disadvantage there is low efficiency because the interpreter must perform a decoding of the, of the statements or constructs of L while it's executing. So a part of the time required for the execution of the uh, original program written in L, uh, uh, a part of the time uh, goes into doing the or performing the decoding. 
Now on the other hand, the advantage here is flexibility. Because one can easily develop, for example, debugging tools when we are in an interpretive uh, implementation. Uh, why is that? Well, because we are actually, uh, since we are, are um, uh, decoding one instructions at a time and then simulate the instruction in the abstract machine, we know exactly where we are situated in the source code, source code at any given time. So it's relatively easy to, to implement a debugger. Um, and the another advantage is that an interpreter is just simpler to develop than a compiler. We don't have to think about the underlying uh, machine language, the underlying language LO. We can just uh, simulate uh, the uh, the instructions of the uh, of uh, the language L using uh, uh, our interpreter. So let's take an example here. Let's say that we have a program here called program 1, P1, that is a for loop. So this is a for loop, we have an initialization phase, i is equal to 1, we have a condition, i is less than or equal to n, and then at each step, uh, at the end of the, of the loop, we, we increase this counter. And the statements that we want to execute in this for loop is, is uh, this c here. So The, the code that, uh, w what needs to be uh, executed is that we might have to put some, uh, uh, the value 1 into some variable, let's call it r1 here, r1 is equal to 1, that's, that's for this initialization step, uh, r2 is n, that's the, the, the stop condition here, and then if R1 is greater than R2, we, we, we're basically done and we jump out of the loop, we go to this label 2, else we need to simulate uh, C here, and at the very end we increase uh, R1, and then we go jump back up to the beginning of the loop, and uh, continue this. So notice that uh, this is a program PT P2 here, notice that this uh, program uh, is not generated by the interpreter. This is kind of a, a high, uh, high uh, a low, we could say some kind of a, a machine code that we are emulating here. But the interpreter does not generate this. The, 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 this code actually describes the operations that the interpreter must execute at runtime once it has decoded the for, for comment. So the interpreter does not output this code. It it is the it it the code describes the operations that the interpreter must execute at runtime. Whereas this code is something that a compiler might generate. Something in the line that a compiler might generate. So, to end this, uh, if we compare the two modes of implementations, uh, the, comp the compiled implementation, we have actually talked about the interpreted implementation, implementation that, that is low efficiency, but there is some flexibility advantage and, and uh, the interpreter is simpler to develop than a compiler. But the advantage for the compiled implementation is high efficiency. So the execution of the compiled version is more efficient than the interpretive implementation because the compiled version does not have the overhead of the instruction decoding phase. We only compile the program once, and once we have compiled it, we can 
run it over and over again. It doesn't have to go through this instruction decoding phase every time, as this is the case for the interpretive implementation. Uh, so, and this uh, decoding of the instruction by the compiler is independent of the number of time uh, the inst instruction occurs at runtime. The disadvantage here is that the compilation approach really loses all information about the structure of the source program. So when a runtime error occurs, it can be difficult to determine which source program command caused it. Because we don't have the link anymore from the source program between the source program and the generated compiled code. Remember, this is one of the advantages with the in interpretive implementation, because we have a we have access to the source, and that means that it's more difficult to implement uh, debugging tools for the compiled implementation. 